let's analyze the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any person can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Qul huallahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allahu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kuffan ahad. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any person saying that is Almighty God, if that person fall in definition, the Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as Almighty God. The first is, Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Second is, Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Third is, Lam yilid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. And the fourth is, وَلَمْ يَكُلَّهُ كُفْفًا أَحَدٍ And there is nothing like him. This Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, is the touchstone of theology. Theo means God, logic means study. Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112 of the glorious Quran, is the touchstone of theology. Anyone claiming to be Almighty God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we accept him to be Almighty God. And for the universal brotherhood to prevail, it's compulsory that you believe and worship only one Almighty God. So anyone claiming to be Almighty God, if that person fits in this four-line definition, we have no objection in accepting that candidate as Almighty God. You know there are many false people who claim to be Almighty God. Let's analyze whether they pass the test or not. And one among such person is Bhagwan Rajnish. You know, there are some people who claim that he was Almighty God. During one of my lectures, in the question answer time, there was a Hindu friend of ours who told that the Hindus don't believe in Bhagwan Rajnish as God. I told him, I do agree, and I've read the Hindu scriptures. Nowhere does the Hindu scripture say that Bhagwan Rajnish is God. What I said, some people say that Bhagwan Rajnish is God. I know very well that Hinduism doesn't consider Bhagwan Rajnish to be God. Let's analyze the claim of such people who say that Bhagwan Rajnish is Almighty God. The first test is, Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Is Bhagwan Rajnish one and only? We know that there are several human beings who claim to be Almighty God, especially in this country. There are several such people claiming to be God. Is he one and only? But his followers may say, no, he is one and only. Let's go to the next test. Allah Samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Was Bhagwan Rajnish absolute and eternal? We know from his biography that you are suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. And he says that the American government, when they arrested him, they gave him slow poisoning. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. The third test is, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. And we know from his biography that Rajnish was born in Madhya Pradesh. He had parents, mother and father, who later on became his own disciples. And in the year 1981, Rajnish goes to America and takes thousands of Americans for a ride. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his own village known as Rajnishpuram. Later on, the American government, they arrest him and they put him behind bars. And in 1985, he is deported. He is sent out of the country. He comes back to India in 1985, and the city of Pune, he starts his own center, Dosho Commune. And if you go there, it's mentioned on the stone there, that Bhagwan Rajnish, Osho Rajnish, never born, never died but visited the earth from the 11th of December, 1931, to the 19th of January, 1990. They forgot to mention that he was not given visas to 21 different countries in the world. Imagine Almighty God, he is visiting the earth and requires visas. And the last test, 
there is nothing like him is so stringent that no one besides allah subhanahu wa taala almighty god can pass the moment you can compare almighty god to anyone in the world to anything in the world he is not god for example if suppose someone says that almighty god is a thousand times as strong as arnold schwarzenegger you know arnold schwarzenegger the person who was given the title mr universe the strongest man in the universe if someone says that almighty god is a thousand times as strong as arnold schwarzenegger the moment you can compare almighty god to anything in this world whether it be arnold schwarzenegger or king kong or dara singh whether it be a thousand times or million times the moment you can compare almighty god to anything in this world he is not almighty god wala mi yakullu kuffan ahad there is nothing like him this is a four line definition of almighty god given in the glorious quran which is the touchstone of theology otherwise the glorious quran says in surah isra chapter number 17 Verse number one hundred and ten. Kulidullah awidur Rahman. I am atadu. Follow all asmaul husna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. You can call Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. And there are no less than ninety-nine attributes. given the glorious quran for allah subhanahu wa taala ar rahman ar rahim most merciful most beneficent no less than 99 we muslims we call almighty god by the arabic name allah and the reason we prefer calling almighty god by the arabic name allah instead of the english word god is because the english word god you can play mischief with that word for example if you add s to god it becomes god's plural of god there is no plural of allah qul huwa allah ahad say he is allah one and only if you add d e s s to god it becomes goddess that means a female god there is no gender to allah subhanahu wa taala he is neither male neither female allah subhanahu wa taala has got no gender allah is a unique word if you add a father to god it becomes god father he is my god father he is my guardian there is nothing like allah father or allah by in islam if you add a mother to god it becomes god mother there is nothing like allah mother or allah mean islam allah is a unique word if you prefix tin before god it becomes tin god meaning fake god there is nothing like tin allah in islam that is the reason we muslims we prefer calling allah subhanahu wa taala by the arabic word allah instead of the english word god but if some people some muslims use the word god for allah subhanahu wa taala so that those who don't know the concept of allah subhanahu wa taala if they can understand i have got no objection but the appropriate word is allah it's much more preferred than the english word god in islam the universal brotherhood does not only spread horizontally that is it doesn't only cover all the regions and all the people of the whole world and universe it even goes vertically the universal brotherhood in islam the universal brotherhood of faith includes vertically even the generations that came before you that went in the past the universal brotherhood in islam includes the people living and the people of past you are a single race you are a single people this universal brotherhood that is the brotherhood of faith it spreads horizontally as well as vertically and the cornerstone of this faith in all the religions if you analyze it is the belief in one creator one almighty god it is only because of this that universal brotherhood can prevail in the whole universe and this universal brotherhood of faith it is far superior to the brotherhood of blood relationships the quran says as i mentioned you should respect your parents the quran says in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 23 and 24 that allah subhanahu wa taala has ordained for you that you worship none but him and that you be kind to your parents 
And if any one of them, or both of them, reach old age, do not say a word of contempt. Don't even say off to them. But lower to them your wing of humility, and address them with honor, and pray to thy Lord that cherish them as they cherished me in childhood. That means you have to love and respect your parents and give them all honor and respect. But at the same time, the glorious Quran says, in Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse number 15, after saying that you have to respect the parents, the Quran says, but if they strive in making thee 